What do Titans, Shiro, Princess of Power, Kim Possible, Powerpuff Girls, Ghostbusters, Star Trek Discovery all have in common? They're all reboots of much loved content that no one wanted. Take this time to instruct the producers, directors, and anyone else be making consumable content in the entertainment industry for people such as myself. Let me take this moment to discuss with these big shots that I know are just, in it, you know, connecting with the public and grinding through video essay after video essay after video essay of YouTubers and their hard labor intensive presentation videos. Tapping into what it is that us fans want. It just makes sense that they're watching exactly what it is that everyone is talking about on this lovely platform that we have here. Because, I mean, it just it makes sense that you would want to accommodate to the fan bases of the franchises that you're working with. I mean, if you're going to reboot a piece of classic content with a healthy respect and admiration from its audience instead of, say, I don't know, coming up with new and interesting concepts for creative content, like you're meant to as people educated, dedicated, and working in the entertainment industry. But I digress. I'm going to walk you through the steps to making a successful reboot, ladies and gentlemen, and you're going to listen to me. First off, you're going to want to find a writer with a vision. A vision of what the original content could be if it were chopped up and rearranged and new pieces were added to the mix that didn't fit quite well. Whether it be a TV show or a movie, in essence. You know, it was just so, so good originally, except for maybe this should have been done differently. This should have been emoted alternatively, however you want to put it. Sometimes this person, this author of the screenplay is a fan of the original content, sometimes they're not. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Regardless of whether or not they enjoyed the original content, what actually matters when searching for a writer for your screenplay is if they have an idea of the material that is completely and utterly unequivocally divorced from the vision and intent of the original creation itself. Most importantly, out with the old and with the new as they say, even though the old classic take, if you will, on the content in question is what emphatically made the content originally so successful, everyone knows that introducing new ideas to a piece of content and remaining true to said content are exclusive concepts, separate entities, mutually reserved, entirely removed, can confirm. So the writer takes their contrarian ideas and then Frankensteins it into the established content. This is what we over in the darkest corners of the fanfiction websites refer to as wish fulfillment in a sense. And it's not always bad necessarily, although usually it is. Wish fulfillment is using the creator's control to create a fiction, a fan art, and or other fan works which address one or more outcomes that the creator wished would come about. But it's not just relegated to the black hole of the internet, no, 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 no. Professionals in entertainment fields employ it nearly just as often. J.K. Rowling herself, the author of the Harry Potter series, my childhood favorite book series, if I'm being honest, has gone on record saying that the relationship between Ron and Hermione in the HP books was absolutely wish fulfillment. She horned into a series where it absolutely didn't make any sense, absolutely. And she wrote the goddamn thing. Twilight is an obvious example of wish fulfillment in original content, but even the subsequent fanfiction loosely based on it, Fifty Shades of Grey, is an example of wish fulfillment classically. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, there are plenty of subsequent wish fulfillment fanfictions that come from those two series. It's a vicious, vicious feedback loop of wish fulfillment. But we are talking about reboots, are uh, so silly of me. Take Terminator Genesis 2015 as an example of rebooting. It completely erases the continuity of the original Terminator franchise, Skynet, sends the Terminator back in time to kill Sarah Connor before John Connor can be born, effectively squashing resistance before it can actually be born. Yes, I know, I just repeated myself, but for emphasis. Oh yes. Then there's the fact that the actions of Skynet trying to quash the resistance actually ensured its existence in effect. Flawless execution, ladies and gentlemen. The newer version, Terminator Genesis. 
Same exact stuff as the original version, except it's an alternative version where the Terminator is actually a good boy watchdog and John is evil nanobot incarnates. What? Oh my god! What a sneaky switcheroonie! Nice try, Scam. Next, we need to fill the shoes of the characters that we're casting for. How do we do that, though? How? We must find, in essence, the perfect person to embody our version of the curly-headed cross-dressing Fisher person comedian with the flappy smush cookie and the fleek eyebrows. Or so help me God, the Twitterverse itself will devolve into utter stromboli on a hat burger, and there will be no chill. There will be no chill. Carla Johansson is a transgender man in Rub and Tug. No bueno. She is not a transgender man. I mean, she could be with the chest binder and perhaps a lack of makeup and uh, hair product. That's not the point. That's not the point. Scarlett Johansson is a sentient cyborg robot that is from Asia. No, she's not a robot. I, I don't think. I mean, she walks like one, but she's not a robot. Nor is she Asian. Although, I don't know how those things interact necessarily, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult to kind of reconcile that that is a difference that matters. Ruby Rose has a red-headed lesbian. She is not redhead, and she is not lesbian. Enough. Nor is she Jewish, which was also an issue, a point of contention. I think that was the biggest one. No, it was definitely the red hair. Then we have Jake Gyllenhaal, a prince of Persia. How dare they not cast an Iranian actor to this video game character, the outfit. Johnny Depp has a Native American named Tonto. And actually, come to think of it, any of Johnny Depp's characters are obviously more trouble than they're worth. So problematic. I mean, come on. We have the albino. We have the gay pirate. We have the candy factory administrator. The mad hatter. A vampire. A barber. Good God, man, have you no shame? None of these people are who you actually are. What? This is utterly ridiculous. Only some of these are reboots, though. The Ghostbusters reboot, a work of art. Brilliant masterpiece, my dudes, changing all of the cast of females. Who could have thunk it? The Cursed Child, Hermione Granger as a black woman, was absolutely marvelous. Not the worst thing in the world that that entire thing did. Definitely. Fantastic Four, Johnny Storm, the brother of Susan Storm, is now black. Can you believe it? What progress we are making as a society. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, but this is just how it has to be now, ladies and gentlemen. That is just how we avoid the wrong kind of angry Twitter hate mobs. Don't get me wrong, you're still gonna get angry Twitter hate mobs, but they just won't be the kind that matter to the bottom line that you're looking for. So, now we have a script, and we have some actors. All that is left is to promote the damn thing by calling every single person who has ever criticized this work of fiction a racist, homophobic, bigoted, mubbly, fungus, waffle, fruity. This is effective because you're causing people on the interwebs to get angry in a most bountiful way for yourself and your creation. People will bitch and moan about the movie, and then you get to call them all of the names in the book, any ad hominem that you can think of as a way of it essentially brushing off any criticism that might be at all valid, which will instill in them a sense of self-righteous offense so powerful that they'll have to write about it on their Twitter machines, and then other people will disagree with their opinions, other people will disagree with their opinions, and they'll jump out of the woodwork and onto the bandwagon of PC I'm better than you-isms because of my different opinion effectively creating a vicious feedback loop of offense and pompous self-righteous opinions. Oldest marketing trick in the book, my dudes. Don't you know that? That will definitely get this blockbuster nominated for several awards. It most likely will not win because award ceremonies are useless time wasters of glitter and hairspray coated hairless and contoured flatbread looking bodies. Let's be honest. Step four. What can I say about step four? This is the most mysterious one, and quite frankly, the most important one, so pay very close attention. You need to scrap the whole lot of work you've just done. Scrap it completely. Chuck it in the waste bin because it's absolute rubbish. Here's what you're going to do instead. You're going to give us, no, you're going to give me the Teen Titans season six that I've been begging for for the last 14 fucking years, bitches. Please and thank you. Good night. Mic drop. Now, if you like what I'm doing here, feel free to check out the links in the description to my Amazon, Patreon, and Teespring stores. If maybe you don't like that, that's okay. You can always like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And don't forget to hit that bell so you can actually get notified because YouTube hates 
everyone. If maybe you want to see more of me in a different capacity, that's totally cool. I do do an RPG-esque stream show every Monday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my God More Scars channel and a bi-weekly stream show about the news with segments for advice, call-ins, fan fiction readers, and more Sundays and Wednesdays from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Some Dumb Americans channel. Links to both of their channels down in the description down below. Peace! Guess what time it is? Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. These are such tiny scissors. I have my knife at my grandma's house. This is the worst thing ever. Open you bastards. Oh, that would have been easy. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. I only got two today. I have I have an inclination as to what these are. Can you can you read that? It says edible anuses. Let's try one. Okay, we're good. I got it open. Oh, there are an assortment of six edible anuses. I wonder whose ass I'm eating today. <laughs> Let's pick this one. Look at that. It's a delicious ass hole. <laughs> I had to put something in someone else's butthole. I want you people to know my tongue went right for the butthole. <laughs> when it went in my mouth. I'm not kidding. All right. It's actually really good. I like milk chocolate. 10 out of 10 would recommend you eat ass. <laughs> I can't believe I... Thank you. Hi, Weibo. Thank you for your purchase. Sincerely, Taylor... Ta Excuse me. Taylor Zakowski, Handmade by Lilith. Oh my gosh. Okay. Penis candles. Two of them. I have received two dick candles. Well, this was, at least there's a theme to this week. That being genitalia. Is this all that I'm good for? So, I guess I know what I'm bringing on side quest this week and contributing to. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> all right, until next week, guys. Thanks for sending me shit. Peace.